In previous videos, I've featured products that have ridiculously low pin count switching power supplies. And they take in from 85 to 265 volts AC, which equates to 120 to 375 volt DC once it's been smoothed uh, and the peak has charged that capacitor up to the top. Uh, and they convert it to 5 volts at this side. And the components are so small. I mean, they're so small, that's one there. See that little tiny transistor thing? That's one of these components that is taking that 375 volts in and creating a 5 volt supply. Anyway... And one of those videos, it was the one with the infrared proximity sensor switch. Someone in the comments, Adam, said uh, it's getting its zero volt reference here, its ground reference, from the zero volt rail down here via this diode, but only as part of the charge cycle. So I thought we'd investigate this, and it's taken some time to work out, but it's very clever. What happens is if it's creating five volts across the main output capacitor, the way it works, it also creates five volts across this capacitor. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this um, earth symbol here because that is not suitable. We'll just call this zero volts. And it's zero volts purely for the circuitry. It is reference to the mains. So it's just the, the circuitry's own zero volt reference. So the first thing that happens when you power this up is that the main supply comes in here, charges this capacitor up, and the circuitry starts charging this capacitor via an internal current limited supply. And once it reaches approximately 5 volts, the circuitry kicks into action and it starts switching this ground connection, which is quite odd, but it has double purpose. It switches it directly over to the high voltage side, so up to 375 volts. And what happens there is that this end goes positive of the inductor and this end is negative. I'll just mark it as negative. And it starts charging this capacitor up here, so this positive side of that capacitor with respect to the, the other rail. And then it turns that inductor off. And it's interesting to note the circuitry, I'll, I'll show you that in the manufacturer's data sheet later. It's interesting to note that it actually jitters the frequency it does this. It can be anywhere between, say, about 30 to 50 kilohertz, depending on the model, but they jitter the frequency very slightly so that it doesn't emit a very strong RF tone, so to speak. It spreads across a bit of, sort of white noise over a larger area for EMF compliance. EMF, EMC compliance, that'd be better. So this has gone up to that high voltage and the inductor pushes back. In the process of uh, building up the magnetic field in the inductor, it pushes back and it limits the current that can flow through to charge that capacitor. Then this turns off, and when it does turn off, because the field is now collapsing, this end goes positive and this end goes negative, and there's a little freewheel flyback diode here that the positive uh, is now at this end of the capacitor, and the negative finds its way through this diode, which means that on both the charge and discharge cycles, it's putting charge into this capacitor. But also, when that's negative, um, this end of the ground connect, this end of the capacitor here, ends up at the zero volts, um, minus 0 0.6 volts with the drop across the diode. And also, because this is now up to, say, it's fully charged and it's up to 5 volts, it is putting 5 volts, but the diode drop means it's minus 0 0.6 volts. And what that means is that you've got the 5 volts minus 0 0.6, but you've also got the 0, it's actually a slight negative voltage, minus 0 0.6 volts, and you end up with 5 volts across it. You end up the same voltage as across this capacitor here. It's weird. It takes a bit of working it out. You have to trace out what's happening in that part of the cycle, and it's very, very neat. So that actually then, having charged that capacitor up to 5 volts to start the chip, it's now powering itself from that feedback circuit, but it's also monitoring the voltage. And when it gets up to 5 volts, it'll cut back. But that's why it needs this resistor here as well, because that also powers the circuitry. You can't just basically stop running it. When this reaches 5 volts, it needs a slight load at all times, just to basically allow the circuit just to bump every so often and just fire some pulses out so it can actually top itself up and get its voltage reference. Other things worth noting, um, the stable voltage refer reference for this is above approximately 4.7 volts, this feedback, because it is monitoring here. So greater than 4.7 volts. If it drops below 4.2 volts, it stops and it does a 
It might even be, I'm trying to remember what it has to go down to, the under voltage uh, kicking again. But um, it goes into hiccup mode, which means it just, if it doesn't make its full voltage, it will charge that capacitor up. It will find that the voltage isn't rising. Say there's a short circuit in the output. And uh, then the voltage in this one will then fall to match that one with the slight load in this circuit. And then it will cut off. And then after a while, it will start charging that up again. It will just keep having a wee go at trying to start the power supply. You know when you see the LED lights that just blink, blink, blink when they're faulty? That's what that's doing. Other things worthy of note here. Um, there is a... I'll show you it. It's... Not complete because they're not giving you all the information. It's also extremely small, but we'll take a look at it and I'll describe the components. Here's the MOSFET in it, but there is also a built in sense resistor to monitor current. So if it sees that the output current is too high, it can actually cut off, and also it can um, detect if the Inductor is like reaching its saturation voltage that can't really build up a magnetic field anymore, so it starts basically passing too much current. Uh, that is sensed by these two voltage levels. I peak max and I peak min. Not sure. Maybe it detects an open circuit situation as well. Um, there is uh, the circuitry. Here's the oscillator, and it's creating the jitter as well as the oscillation frequency, and that's going to the control for that MOSFET. Here is the well, the high voltage regulator. This is the bit that's actually putting out the uh, current. It's passing the current to charge up the VCC capacitor. And then it's got the under voltage lockout is here uh, with the references for that, for uh, the making sure it doesn't start until it's fully charged up. It's complicated, very complicated, but very, very clever. I have to say that now I understand it um, and the way that works and... It, the hardest bit was getting my head around the fact that this was actually ending up at minus 0.6 volts at the ground here. and But it still manages then to to get that reference. And even when it's got the high voltage in the output here, all that happens is that the capacitor just sits on top of that high voltage. The chip still just sees that high voltage. Things that weren't shown in the manufacturer's data sheet were the fact that ultimately it must have, because the... What's the best way to put this? It must have level shifters inside to be able to drive the MOSFET, although it is switching to the high side. It's complex. It's. I wonder who came up with this. It's the fact that they've got this tiny three-pin chip. This little thing here, very hard to even pick up. Uh, a little SOT23 package, and it's doing all that work. It's actually dwarfed by the inductor and the capacitor. Very clever, but I will be looking at other circuits that use these because, well, it's used in a lot of things and it's very, very popular in the cheap remote control uh, receivers and also the little Wi-Fi plug-in mod, like the plugs you get for that. And the package, it's only rated uh, to provide 5 volts, about 100 milliamps, but you get the ones, they put it into bigger packages, like, say, for instance, the 8-pin package. But all they really do is that... Uh, all these pins are just common and they're just using a couple of the pins the other side and that's it. The other one that was very interesting is they had an extra pin. That was the one in the infrared switch that if you bridged it to the 5 volt rail or or should I say the VCC rail, it would be 1 voltage like 5 volts and if you bridged it to ground it would be 3.3 volts. Very clever. I just stuck my finger in that tiny little component. But very clever indeed. Very neat. Once you get your head around it, it's actually quite genius. Very, very nice indeed.